For this second exercise on the Baltic Waves product, we're going to use the same products as before, but uh, this time we're going to see how to reduce the data sets in order to zoom in on uh, a specific region. And also, we're going to superimpose the uh, significant wave height and the wave's direction. We still consider the same time period for the storm event in uh, January 2017. So this is exactly the same product as before. And the first thing that we do is to load the Python libraries as before. So again, shift plus enter or this button here. So once the libraries are imported, uh, we're going to look at uh, the wave directions and the uh, significant wave height. So here again, we, we create um, a folder to save the plots for this specific exercise. And now we are going to load and open the NetSave files. This time, we're going to look at two different uh, files at the same time. So, because we saw in the previous exercise that there was an increase by the end of the day of the 11th of January in the significant wave height, but uh, actually the, the significant wave height was still decreasing during the 12th of January. So, um, we would like to see the whole uh, period of the of the storm, and to do that, we will load uh, the files for the 11th and for the 12th of January um, using uh, um, a function, uh, the M open MF dataset, which enables to open two or a number of files at the same time and, to, and store them directly in one dataset. Uh, so just to come back here, we will use two different variables this time and not four. We will use the significant wave height and the mean wave direction. So uh, again, we define the, the path for the data, the name of the first file, so for the 11th of January, the second file, for the 12th, the var names here. We store all the data in one data set. Um, which is possible by because they have a similar uh, a special uh, coordinates, longitude and latitude. And in fact, this uh, open MF dataset will concatenate uh, the time frames. So we will end up with uh, 48 time frames in one dataset. And so we store the variables specific to the uh, significant wave height and to the wave directions in a specific variable here. And we're going to print that and we give short names and we close the total dataset. So I validate this cell here and you can see that we have now for this VHM0, so the significant wave height variable here, we have 48 time frames, as I said before, because the time was con uh, there was a concatenation of the time from the two different files, and we still have the same number of latitudes and longitudes for the, the grid. And uh, that's it. So, so you can see that the time goes now from the from one o'clock in the morning uh, for the 11th of January to midnight. Uh, the for the 13th of January. So now we're going to uh, look at um, a reduced time period. And to do so, we are going to select the data from our variable that corresponds to this uh, time uh, reduced time period. Um, 
so we define a, a, a date that corresponds to the beginning of the period and uh, the date that corresponds to the end of the period. So from the 11th of January at 11 in the morning to the 12th of January at 10 in the morning. And we use the slice function here to uh, uh, define the index in the, in the variable that corresponds to this uh, time period between date min and date max. And we also reduce the data set uh, and, uh, geographically de by defining uh, lat min, lat max, low min, and low max. And we use exactly the same function to reduce the, to extract the indexes for the longitude that corresponds to uh, the, the longitudes between low min and low max, and the same for the latitude. So if I validate this, uh, we end up with a new reduced data set for the significant wavefront that has 24 time frames now between date min and date max. If I look at the time now, it's between date min here and date max here. It's OK. And also, we have reduced the latitude and the longitude. Now we only have 600 uh, latitude points and uh, 360 lat longitude points between uh, 54 degree north and uh, 64 degree north for the latitude and uh, also for the longitude we have the correct selection so that's good and the same for the direction so now we are going to map this uh, reduced data set we are going to use the same functions as before as the one we used in the, in the first notebook so I won't go into details into it, but um, we plot the data for the significant wave height here. So I validate the cell. And as you can see, we have uh, 24 subplots here. And we loop on the time to plot one map for each uh, time frame over the reduced period and we will also plot the uh, we will also see the, the uh, geographical red, um, reduction of the data set because as you see I defined the plot window uh, a bit larger than the, the reduced data set so we will see some uh, blank regions due to the fact that we have extracted the data set. So it's a bit long to generate the plot. And now you see that we have saved the file with the plot and we have our figures here for the significant wave height. So you can see that we have reduced re the region and we plot from the 11th of January at 11 o'clock to the 12th of January at 10 o'clock in the morning. So you can see the evolution of the significant wave height during this time, uh, this uh, storm event. Okay, so now, now we are going to um, plot the wave directions from the reduced data set. Um, to do so, we're going to look at the long name attribute of, the, of uh, our wave direction variable. So it says it's mean wave direction from. It's a convention and it says that actually uh, the direction that are given are uh, direction from and not the directions to uh, where the waves are going. So to ease the, the interpretation of the maps, we will uh, compute the UV components of the wave directions with the conventions of the direction 2. So this is what is done here. And now we are going to superimpose these wave directions using the quiver function that plots uh, arrows at different uh, positions 
over the significant wave height. So you can see again here we have a loop on the time. And um, yes, I reduced the number of time frames to one out of three here. And also I reduced the number of points where to plot the wave direction arrows to one out of ten here because uh, otherwise we can't see anything on the maps. So where do we find this? We find it here, because here we say that we loop on the time, but with a time step of three, so every three time, time frame. And for the quiver function here, we say that we will use every uh, one point out of 10 for all the parameters. So let's go. And it's running, as you can see here, with this little star. And here we are. We have these uh, different plots that are displaying. So we, we have one plot per, um, per file here. And so one, one plot per time frame. And you can see that uh, we have the waves that come from the, the Danish Strait and that goes up to the Baltic proper and to the Bosnian Sea. And you can see here the increase in the significant wave height and the fact that the waves are going more northward uh, when the, uh, the storm event uh, increase here. And still we see this evolution and then the situation is relaxing here, as you can see, and the direction of the waves is changing a bit. Okay, so now you, see, you know how to plot the arrows of the wave directions over the significant wave height with Python. Congratulations! And you can jump to the next tutorial. <laughs> Thank you.